Alright, I don't know how clear it is to the camera, but to the naked eye, there is a substantial wonk in the overall frame. So wherever I've done extensive um, welding and heating of the metal on one side that I haven't done on the other, the metal bar will bend around the hot side. So the cold side, after you're done, will wind up being longer than the hot side. Uh, however that's best expressed, I don't know. But my solution is the suspension bridge effect. I'm going to tighten down on these straps and it's going to put pressure on the two points where I see a substantial kink. And uh, I might even hit the uh, those areas with a torch just to make sure that it's not bending the rest of the frame, just the two points where I see a sort of kink developing. So I'm going to leave these um, straps on overnight, maybe increase the tension after I heat the thing up a bit, and uh, less is more. Don't crank the crap out of it because then I'll wind up bending it too far the other way and then I've got more work to do undoing it. So I'm just going to set this up and uh, see what kind of an effect I can have because I've still got more work to do and probably not more, not a lot more time today anyway. Half of the fun of this project is changing the design constantly on the fly. Uh, this doesn't look like much, but it'll make a lot of sense in one second. There you go. Slightly overkill, but that is, well, in my opinion, a very elegant solution. I like it. Moving on to the lights here. Um, the lights can't touch the ground for the obvious reason. I want the trailer frame to touch the ground so I have as smooth as possible uh, lip. And that means this needs to mount at least sort of this high. I don't want it to not stick out beyond the back of the trailer bed either. So for it to be up this high, these mounting bolts are higher than this range of material which means I need to add something that's higher and out here. Now the way to do that is to just add some of this pipe and I'm going to make a little triangular chunk and then put an L bracket on top of that and that's what I'm actually going to drill through. So here's how you do that. Cut yourself out the shape that you want. That's about how big it's going to be. And then I want a flat part facing backwards and a flat part facing forwards and this is like going to be a skid to uh, hit and deflect anything that's going to knock my lights off. And then you simply trace it so I can remember how I did this exactly. I think it was like this. No. No. <laughs> That's one way or another. Uh, starts here. Oh, right. So that's the first trace. And then this part of the metal is going to be remain solid. I'm not cutting that. So then this will just bend all the way to there. And then the second is right there. So that's where I've cut it. And then this part welds to the frame, and then the, the equivalent, this part, welds to the frame, and then I've got my triangular attachment. This piece of paper only has to last for me to trace out one more of these things, and I'm cutting it out using the uh, reciprocating saw. I find it just does so much cleaner a job than... Uh, the grinder, because the grinder cutting wheels are thicker and they throw all the material all over the place. This thing just makes a little sparkly pile, I don't know if you can see that. But uh, one more of these to cut after this one, weld them on, and then we move on to uh, angle brackets to hold the lights. Whoops, that is not how you do that. Uh, so I got this angle correct, but this does not translate. And uh, this is still the exterior edge, so this, whatever this angle is, it needs to be half of that angle. So actually, it's on this side of the angle. So I now need to cut a line here and here so that I can bend this all the way along that line. Well, live and learn. So there you go, cut out one strategic chunk of metal. And my brackets are now useful again.
Okay, so I'm all about clamps, uh, and this is a piece of uh, angle iron. Oh, I can't see that. This is a piece of angle iron to make sure that everything is straight along the back, and then the clamps just make sure that I didn't have to pre-weld anything. If it wasn't clamped, that thing would be springing all over the place because it's uh, a little unstable. But anyway, let's get some welding done here. All right, so a bit of an update. We're partially assembled. You'll notice I don't have the suspension connected in all four points. It is not because the axle's twisted. It is because one of the leaves is uh, more open than the other, is one way of putting it. Uh, so anyway, I'm still going to have to sort of crank it down with a ratchet strap or something to get it connected. But the bolts are very tight fit through the, um, I guess they're nylon sleeves in there. So, like I was hammering like mad to get this guy to go through. Not like mad, but I tried turning it in with a wrench until it wouldn't turn anymore because the threads weren't engaged. So the, I just want the thing to sort of support on its own weight so I can test how it articulates. And uh, it does precisely what I want it to do. Comes all the way down to the ground. Uh, it's not perfectly even at the moment, but that's because the suspension isn't complete. Um, I also, that tire wasn't holding air, so I had to clean the rim and put a bit of uh, goop on the inside of it, blast it full of air, and uh, I think it's good. So anyway, here's a problem. I shouldn't have been so zealous in attaching those because that's not where I want them. I don't want them right at the very, very back. Uh, this means that the bulbs, or the light fixtures, uh, entirely would have to stick out backwards, which can't be because this is the part that touches the ground. Um, I don't want the bulbs, or the lights, I keep saying that, I don't want the lights um, higher than the deck. I sort of want them centered along the line of the deck. Just aesthetically, I think it would look better. So, they need to be further forward on the frame than right at the rear corner. So I'm going to have to cut these off, which is a shame. Uh, so it has occurred to me to achieve that, which is what I'm looking for. I don't know how far forward they have to be, um, because I don't want the, the lights touching the ground at all. And one way or another, the lights will stick slightly above and slightly below the frame, because obviously the frame is only inch and a quarter or a thick. So, when the thing is touching the ground, this is a side view, the light is going to be far enough forward that it's not touching the ground when the back of the trailer is touching the ground. And then I'm going to make a little support or a, just a little bumper that's on the frame line, just in case I'm on uneven ground and the uh, light is resting on a rock or something. I don't want the light to break while I'm loading the trailer. The problem with that is that the license plate is lit up by the underside of the brake light. And uh, I don't think it's so much a problem that the license plate won't be at the absolute rearmost point of the trailer, but you are required to have red lights at the rearmost point of the trailer, at least at night you are. So, I may have to add uh, at least reflectors on the rear edge of the trailer. Get that reflective red-white stripey tape or something sexy, you know, whatever. But um, I have to come up with something. What I've determined is that the lights don't have to be too far forward. It's only about six inches. So I think given that it's only six inches, it's totally acceptable. So for now, I'm just going to proceed with mounting the plate uh, the only thing is the license plate, I'm going to hang it from a pair of chain links um, instead of the little plastic fixed frame because when the trailer's touching the ground, I'll need the plate to be laying flat as well. So the plate's going to swing slightly, but as long as it's underneath the light while it's hanging, it should be fine. And ultimately, this is it's not like I'm going to be towing this constantly. I'm only going to be towing it every now and again. I don't have that much. I move my motorcycle up to the shop like once a year, if that. So anyway, I have to cut these things off, which is kind of tragic, but whatever. And then I'm going to make new ones. Now, having done so, you can see how I sort of jury-rigged the, um, the cut lines so that I could uh, weld it up shut. I'm going to make these out of angle iron instead, because I can't really bolt through these. The bolts on the lights are not long enough to do that. So... I'm using my triangle trick again, but this time you trace out your triangle, rotate it, trace it out again, and that lets me know where the last cut needs to be, which is up here. But then you fold the paper and then trace 
these two angles. And there you go. So this is the new line that I'm going to be welding when I bend it right here. So there we go. I'm going to cut two of these out. I'm going to make two um, light sort of holding guards for the front of the frame. Those are the, the sort of clearance indicators or whatever they're called, just marker lights. And then I'm going to have to make fenders. I've forgotten about that stage, but I was just going to use some black crazy carpet material. And the tires only stick up above the frame like an inch when it's not under load. So at a maximum possible load, they're only going to stick up maybe three inches. So that's going to give me a pretty short fender requirement, right? And then maybe I'll, I'll extend the fender material like that crazy carpet material down to make mud flaps. Um, crazy carpet, not really durable stuff, but it doesn't have to be. The uh, angle iron that I weld to the frame is the only part that needs to be permanent. So, let's get to work.